What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Juice and Toya podcast. I am your co-host, Juice. And I am Toya. Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. Um, Before we get into today's episode, because it is a good one, this is probably one one of our most requested topics. Oh, yeah. We have a few housekeeping things. So first of all, if you are in LA, we're kicking off our Summer Sweat series with our first workout right here in LA, July 8th. So if you're in LA or the surrounding area, Come join us. Come sweat with us. Come get in a great workout. Mm -hmm. Um, We will post the link to sign up in the show notes, um, in the description, wherever you're watching. Yeah. Come join us. The first one we did was so much fun. The energy was just amazing. Yeah. And we've been giving you guys, you know, workouts virtually online for, what, three, four years now. And now, you know, we're just now getting the opportunity to get in front of you guys. Like, we... You know, we love obviously putting out these workouts, but, you know, it's just a a different feeling to just see you guys in person and to really interact with you. And, you know, we just want to, you know, just get in front of you. Yeah, and also to meet more of the Juice and Toya community. If you're in our Facebook group, I think a lot of people in there are like family now to each other and have probably never met. So (laughs) a good opportunity to connect with the Juice and Toya community, share your testimonies, your stories, and just have some fun. Correct. Also... Subscribe to the Juice and Toya podcast channel. This is not going on our main Juice and Toya channel. All of these episodes that we're recording will be live in video format on the Juice and Toya podcast channel. And also uh, drop your suggestions under that channel too as well. That's where we're checking to see what you all want to see. So be sure to go subscribe. I think we're almost at 1,000 subscribers. So we appreciate everybody who's already subscribed to the channel. It means a lot to us. And again, this is a new journey for us. Um, we're excited, and um, yeah, if you haven't checked out our first episode also, we have that available right now. Um, it's about me and Toya, our journey together, who we are as individuals, and if you're interested in learning more about us, just, as an, intro- just as an introduction, go check that out. It's, it's amazing. Oh, so. yeah. So now we took care of the housekeeping. We can get we right go. into the episode. What you're here for. So this is genuinely one of our most requested questions. I'd say mm-hmm. outside of how many calories does this burn, <laughs> this is one of our most asked questions. So yeah. um, how to write your own program. Wow. Um, so first, let's get into why it's important yeah. to have a program in the first place. Yeah. So if you're just doing random workouts all the time, right? And mm-hmm. let's say you get to your goal how do you know what helped you to get there, yep. right? It could have been the strength training you did, the cardio you did, or whatever. So having a program that you followed to get to your goal gives you a formula of what's worked or what hasn't worked for you. Oh, yeah. And honestly, you know, programs is how we train ourselves. There are times where, you know, we don't necessarily have a program in place, but when we're training for something, let's say for vacation when we go to Hawaii yeah. or when – You know, we're training for our birthdays. We have a program, whether it's six weeks, eight weeks, four weeks. It just helps us to stay on track and makes us more accountable. And and again, we'll get into that as we go into this podcast. But programs are very, very beneficial for making sure that you know what you're doing on a daily basis. It keeps you accountable. And at the end of the day, it has an end goal. Right. You're not randomly doing things. Uh, just because you're just working out, right? It, it, it's in place for a reason. And so. gives you some structure. Structure. Too. Yep, uh, gives mean, you some structure, especially sure. with today's day and age. I don't know about you all, but our days are busy, Crazy. right? And so when you have, you wake up, you already know what you're doing at the gym. That eliminates some of that time of, yeah. well, what am I doing today? Yeah. Well, by the time I figure out what I'm doing, I've already wasted 30 minutes, mm-hmm. you know? So you already have something laid out. You're prepared yeah. and gives you some structure. A program so. is kind of like, you know, in elementary school when you had the lunch uh, the <laughs> lunch calendar, right? You knew pizza day was on Friday, so it got you excited. You knew exactly what you were eating every You weren't single... packing your lunch from home <laughs> you on knew, those days. <laughs> exactly. You knew what you were eating, and, you know, you, it gave you something to look forward to, and yeah. it's, it's set in stone, right? It's a calendar of your everyday life, your your workouts and all that good stuff. So yeah. uh, let's get into it, man. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. All right. So the way we have this episode for you today, we have some points listed out. Yeah. Um, we can do a whole nother episode on the details, but today we just wanted to give you some broad overall tips on how to get started in writing your own program. Right. All right. So if you want to take some notes, um, we'll also put some notes in the yeah. description we'll for you, you all. Um, but some people like to take notes on a topic like this. For so sure. 
the first thing that we recommend when it comes to writing your own program mm -hmm. is write down your goals. Yes. So this can be a very broad goal or it can be a very specific goal. If you're just getting started on your fitness journey, your goal might be simply, I want to build muscle or I want to lose weight. If you've already been on your journey or you're more familiar with your body, your goal might be, I want to lose 3% body more fat specific. or I want to build my glutes or um, increase my strength on my back squat, Correct. right? So getting started with a goal gives you an idea of what am I looking to achieve, mm -hmm. right? So it's hard to write a program. Like he said earlier, there's an end goal in a program yeah. and it's hard to write a program when there's no goal in mind. Correct. And keep in mind, this is how we program. If we have our own personal clients, mm -hmm. we have to, this is the first thing we ask them. Like, what is your goal? Like, what do you want to get out of training with me? What are you looking to achieve? Like, what are you looking to achieve? Because if I don't know, then I don't know how to create the path or the directions to get you there, right? So make sure that your goal, write down everything you want to achieve, even if it's something that you think is like not possible, right? Right. Even as you go throughout your program or as you go throughout time, it might become more possible as you make those progressions, right? It may yep. seem like, let's say, you know, you want to lose a hundred pounds, right? That may be daunting. That may seem like I'll never lose a hundred pounds. But if you create, you know, once you go throughout a program and over time you, you chip away at it, you know, nine Comes months down realistic. the road, you're like, wow, I'm only 25 pounds away from right. my goal, right? So be as realistic or unrealistic as you want. Just create something that you want for yourself, right? Yep. Just create something that at the end of the day, you can look back and say, that was my goal and I accomplished it. So write down your goal. That's the number one thing that you must do when it comes to creating a program for yep. yourself. So, all right. Number two, try to, you know, figure out a realistic training frequency for yes. yourself. So, for example, let's say you just started working out for the first time ever. Right. You haven't or you've been slacking for a while. You haven't been working out and, you know, you need to realistically tell yourself, how many days do I want to commit to working out? Is it three days? Is it four days? Is it five days? Is it two days, right? Try to create a realistic training frequency because that's what you're going to base your program off of, right? Yes. And honestly, the big question might be is what? how do I know what's realistic, mm -hmm. right? You know your schedule. You know your everyday life more than I do. And so you know your commitment level. You know, <laughs> you know your commitment level. If you have commitment issues, if you feel mm -hmm. like you've – gone through programs before and you haven't gotten through it, you know, especially if it was based on like three, four or five days a week, then just start with two days a week. And yeah. honestly, I recommend starting low mm -hmm. and then working your way up. If you say, if you, sometimes people come into it very ambitious. They're like, you know what? You know, I need to get back into it. I'm every ready. Day, no I'm ready. Rest every days. day, no rest day. I'm going hard. I'm going to lose this way. I, I get it. You're ambitious. You're anxious. You're excited. You want to get started, but be realistic with what you know you're capable of because you can be you can do those five days a week for the first couple of weeks and then you get burnt out and now it's only three days and two days and that defeats the entire purpose of a program. Absolutely. Right? So make I mean, sure that you're, you know, you're, you're choosing a realistic time. Frame. Yeah. And when you're figuring out the days that you want to work out, keep in mind the time Correct. that you have too. So you might be able to work out five days a week, but how much time do you have in those five days? Is it 30 minutes, 45 minutes? And keep in mind the time that it takes you to prepare for the workout, your warm up. Are you driving to the gym? Um, do you have childcare involved and you have to drop your kids off? You know, keep yeah. in mind really how long it would take you to fully do that workout with all of those things in mind. Correct. Because if you write yourself an hour long workout and you only have an hour of time, yeah. that might include your drive to the gym, your drive home, yeah. showering before work, et cetera. Yeah. So figure out a realistic training frequency, whether that's three times a week for 30 minutes or um, that can even mean, you know, one day out of the week, you have two hours of time yeah. allotted for your workout where you might say, I'm going to get in some extra cardio that day, mm -hmm. you know, and the rest of the days you only have an hour, whatever it is for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Just start low and you can always increase it as you go. I'd rather you start low than start high and decrease it because again, it defeats the entire And purpose. also that gets discouraging because then you yeah, get hard on yourself sure. and you say, well, I was doing four days a week. Now I'm only doing two I might as well just then give you up. beat yourself up about it. Right. You no, know, we don't want to do that. Yeah. You know what so I mean? So let yourself have a realistic time frame that you can maintain. And like he said, start low. And then as you get more comfortable, you might even find enjoyment in it mm. where you want to increase. So like that. figure out a realistic time frame. And once we have this, yes, now we can step get to number the, three. The fun part. Once you got your goals, right? 
Now you created a realistic time frame yep. for your workouts. Now we're going to get into the fun part. It's time to create the routine. Yes. Right? Now it's time to fill in those blanks of what you're going to do on those days within that certain time frame. Yep. So this is why it's important to really ask yourself, how committed am I to this frequency of training? Mm -hmm. Because if you say, okay, I'm going to work out five days a week for 30 minutes. Now you are writing this program based on, five days. I have five days to get in whatever it is I need to get in. Yeah. So let's say you're doing a split routine and you're doing leg days on Mondays and Wednesdays, an upper body day on Tuesdays, and cardio on Thursdays, and a full body on Friday, right? Yeah. Let's say you miss Monday and Wednesday. You just miss two leg days, And those right? are important. Those are important days. And so you're missing, especially let's say your goal is to build your legs or build some muscle in your glutes. Mm -hmm. You are missing frequency and you are missing a stimulus that's part of your program. Yeah. So this is another reason why it's important to start low and base your program on that. And then if you have extra days to fit in, that's yeah. accessory work. And that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, we'll give you some quick examples of like how to split up your routines based on a certain amount of days. And also keep in mind, you know, this goes for if you're writing your own workout specifically with exercises like circuit style training, like what you see on our app, which we'll talk about later. Or if you're doing follow along workouts, you know, yeah. you can split up those workouts. You can say, I'm doing this 20 minute hit workout on Monday. I'm doing this, uh, you know, full body strength workout on Wednesday. And I'm doing this cardio workout on Friday. Right. This goes for whatever style of training you prefer as well. Yeah. Right. This isn't just for specifically circuit style training or for any training. program for any program. You know, we're just trying to generalize it. And again, like she said before, we'll get into more details. It's just baseline. But. There, we'll get into more details as to like There's so uh, much. That it's can it's go a lot because because again, you know, we don't know each one of you specifically, and I can't tell you what's gonna work for you as far as how to split the days. Yes, right. If that makes sense. And now that you have, let's say it's five days a week for thirty minutes a day, now you're able to fit in the tools that are needed to reach your goal. So let's say yep. your goal is to build some muscle. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to be lifting or doing some type of strength, strength training, training in there. So you want to make sure that you're fitting in all your muscle groups in there. Right. Yep. So if I'm, my goal is to build muscle and I do shoulders on Monday, glutes on Tuesday and calves on <laughs> Thursday, what about every other muscle yeah. group? Right. So yep. this is where you can kind of look at what is my goal? What is that going to take? And even if you don't know, start. Yeah. Start. Right? Start somewhere and mm -hmm. you have a general idea of what it's going to take. If you want to build muscle, you're going to have to do some strength training. Yeah. If you want to lose some body fat, you're going to have to get your heart rate up. Yeah. You're going to have to move your body. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so many things that can be specific, but start somewhere yeah. and then add in that variability. So you might look at this and say, okay, I now need to change my frequency because I don't have enough days to get in what I want. Yeah. So if you're starting at only two days a week and you want to build muscle overall, you might say, I might need to commit another day in there to really get in some more strength training, mm -hmm. depending on your goal. So um, keep in mind when you're writing your workouts for the week, whether it's follow along or circuit style training, uh, think of it like this. You know, you need stimulus, right? You need enough stimulus enough uh, throughout the week to make sure that you can make progressions from week to week. So, for example, like she mentioned, if my goal is to lose body fat, you want to work the entire body. Think about it. If you're just working your biceps once a week, that's not enough to where you can grow from that, right? You need to be hitting at least two times a week in order to make some progressions from week to week. So keep in mind stimulus. The more stimulus you can get from week to week, the better you're going to be off. And honestly, the faster you'll reach that goal, right? So um, let's just give them some quick examples of what, you know, three days a week, like how would you break down a, you know, if, if you're committing to three days a week, my mm -hmm. goal is to lose body fat, build strength. How would you break up that week in a way that gives you that stimulus and you can grow from week to week? I think if my goal is to lose body fat, movement yeah. is going to be important, but nutrition is going to 100. be key, right? With any goal, nutrition is key. So yeah. if I only have three days of movement, mm -hmm. like you said, I'm moving my entire body. I'm making sure that every day of those three days is going to count, whether that is compound movements, whether I'm doing a HIIT workout, whether I'm focusing on increasing in my strength training, whatever it is, I'm utilizing every muscle group because three days out of seven days, it's not that many days. So I'm making sure that every minute of that workout 
counts Correct. towards my goal. But then on those other days, that doesn't mean do nothing, right? On those other days, I'm focusing. I may not have the time to get in a workout, mm -hmm. but I have the time to move my body, whether that is standing while I'm working or taking the stairs at work or parking further away at the going grocery store, walk. going on a walk, but also focusing on my nutrition. Yep. That doesn't require taking out time for a workout, right? Yeah. Like making smarter nutrition choices and things like that. Nutrition so, is every day. Yeah. You can't be three days a week in nutrition, right? Yep. You got to make sure that that's supplementing your Regardless program. Regardless of your training frequency. You can, yeah, you, you can't... <laughs> You can't go and have a successful training program, honestly, if your nutrition is not on point on a yeah. daily basis, right? Your body needs these nutrients every day. Your body needs water, right? It needs to be hydrated. All these different things go into how you recover, how you perform, you know what I mean? So that is very important um, when you're only working out two to three times per mm -hmm. week. You have to include everything, right? Um, and, and even if you're, you know, even if you're working out more days a week, that matters too. It doesn't just because you're just yeah, working. Regardless of the frequency. Regardless of so. the frequencies. That's yeah. important. So. Um, three days a week, I probably wouldn't do a split routine again, no. because if I only have Monday, Wednesday, Friday to work out, if something happens and I can't get in Wednesday, I'm missing an entire muscle group yeah. now. So regardless of my goal, I would say with three days a week, whether I'm trying to build muscle, lose body fat, I'm hitting full body yeah. personally. And I, and I know. A lot of you may ask, is three days a week enough? Yes. It can be. It can be yeah. enough because at the end of the day, we, we preach this all the time. Whatever is going to keep you consistent is going to be enough, yep. right? Whatever is going to make sure that you're, if you're nailing those three days a week, then, you know, it's going to be enough for you. You know what I mean? And if you're, like I said, if you're working out five days a week or if you plan to work out five days a week and you're only doing, you're doing three, one week, two, one week, then you know, inconsistent. It's inconsistent, right? And that's that makes for not a good program. You know yep. what I mean? So um, let's go with another example. Let's say um, I want to build strength and lose body fat, and I'm I can commit. I've been working out for five days a week. It's important yeah. to me. I have to move my body every single day. It's part of my daily routine. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can break this down. Because yes. again, I don't know your goal, right? But I can maybe just use myself as an example. So that's something that I, I like to do all the time. I like to build strength. I always want to feel strong and I always want to feel uh, everybody wants to lose a little body fat here and that. You know what I mean? So how I typically break down my program, I love meeting. This is me personally. And I don't feel like you need to follow <laughs> what I'm doing. Don't follow what I'm doing and feel like it's going to work for you. OK, everybody's different. But this is what my program looks like if I'm going off five days a week. I love personally to start my Mondays off with a leg day. It's yep. something about a leg day, um, you know, it's just, I just feel good. You know, it, it's, 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 I used to hate legs to be, honest, <laughs> to be honest with you. When I was in college, I was one of those bros that's like, I don't feel like doing legs, man. I'm trying to do some biceps. Only I wanna, biceps. I want to, I want to build up my shoulders. You know, I, I don't have time for these legs, but obviously as you get older and you understand the body, you got to move your legs. People. Time to grow up. So for all the bros out there who aren't, you know, doing, please do leg day. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Like, like do you, work your legs. So anyways, I like to work my legs on Monday. That's just how I like to start my week. Tuesdays, I go into upper body. I like to work typically, and, and I'm sure you can agree, upper body is a little bit easier for us, at least boring. mentally. <laughs> for her, it's boring, right? Um, I like to do uh, lower on Monday, upper on Tuesday, and that's kind of like my split as far as how I split those routines. Um, and I go hard during those days, keep in mind too as well. So usually Wednesday is like more of a, I'm dropping the weights, right? It's, it's more, it's not necessarily low impact, but I don't want to, um, you know, I, I've taxed my muscles on Monday, Tuesday, and I like to do more of a cardio or a body weight hit. Um, you know, on a normal day when I'm, when I didn't rupture my Achilles, I'm doing more plyometrics. I'm doing sprints, things like that. That's more of a hit style training. Just dropping the weights and uh, moving my body that way. Thursday, I'll do more of a full body day. It's more full body hit. The lights, the lights, the weights are a little bit more of or more moderate, right? And I'm doing more of a hit workout. And then Friday, I'll do again more of a full body workout, more moderate weight, but it's more kind of a combination of um, Wednesday and Thursday, right? So if you break all of that down, let's talk about stimulus again, right? I got my leg day in, right? One day. I got a hit day. Um, let's talk about legs specifically. Monday, I got I hit legs. Wednesday, I hit legs again. Thursday, I hit a little bit of legs. Again, it's full body. And Friday, I hit a little bit of legs, right? It's a little bit. I'm not focusing on legs 
uh, Wednesday through Friday, but that's four days of stimulus that I'm getting with my legs to where I can grow. Same thing with my upper body. I had a specific upper body day. I had light, light upper body. If I do that on Wednesday, a uh, little bit of upper body on Thursday and Friday. That's four days of stimulus that I'm getting throughout my entire body and also my core too as well. I'm adding some core workouts in as well. But as you can see, it's not just one day that I'm just hitting one particular muscle group. Right. I'm hitting all of these different muscle groups four days a week. And I have to focus on my recovery too. Because if you're, again, if you're giving your body a lot of stimulus, you have to focus on making sure they're efficient every single day too. And recovery goes along with your nutrition as well. So that's just my particular example of how I like to split up my routines. There are a lot of different ways that you can split it up. But again, it's all about stimulus. It's all about frequency and sustainability, making sure that you can honestly do that every single week. Because there's sometimes where I'll start week one of my program and it's Saturday and I'm like, I can't move. Yeah. How am I going to do this next week? And you can start to make those adjustments there as you go. Yep. So. And I think just an example using us again too, we also film usually every week on oh, Wednesdays yeah. we film. So depending on what we're filming, that my schedule of programming of workouts might be a little bit different. Correct. So I know usually Wednesdays is when we film. I don't hit legs on Tuesdays <laughs> because yeah. I know I usually get sore. Or I'm more fatigued. Um, if I'm fighting a flare up, I know that sometimes if I lift heavy, it creates a flare. Yeah. And so for me, I usually do upper bodies on Tuesdays because it's a little bit easier for me. And mm -hmm. But I know that I'm not going to be, I might be sore, but it doesn't tax me as much right. as a leg day. So right. sometimes your program might be written around your lifestyle. If you mm. are someone like us and Wednesdays are a day that you, um, I don't know, go hiking with your friend, you know, you might not want to have sore legs or, yeah. you know, there might be something that happens or like Saturdays you play soccer at, with a group. And so yeah. you want to have fresh legs to play soccer Saturday. Right. So your program might be dependent upon your lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when you're writing your program. That's something I have to do. I have yeah. to say, what are we filming on Wednesday this week? Oh, we have a booty workout and a hit workout. Yeah. Cool. I can hit upper body and be fine. And that's just an example of being realistic. Yes. Right. Understanding what your schedule is, what you like to do, what activities you like to do and work around it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then also, too, and we'll talk about this maybe a little bit later, but, you know, it's not every day doesn't have to like it doesn't have to be leg day on Monday every single week. Yeah. If you have to switch things around again, that's the beauty of a program. You can do your leg day on the Wednesday. You can do that upper body day on yep. Monday. Switch things around as your life sort of changes and your schedule changes too as well. And I want to say it's okay to work out on Saturdays and Sundays yeah, because when we do on. our challenges or programs in the app, it's day one, day two, day three, day four, day yep. five. It's usually five days a week. Sure. And we always get people that say, um, I missed Tuesday. Is it okay if I do it on Saturday? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like you're allowed to work out good. whenever you want to. Yeah. Day one through five doesn't have to mean Monday through Friday. Correct. With your work schedule, you might be off Saturdays and Sundays and that's when you prefer to lift because you have more time or whatever. So yeah. um, keep in mind, your schedule doesn't have to look like Monday through Friday. And, and just to, yeah, yeah, just be, be realistic. Yes. With your schedule. And, and like she said, that's why I dropped the weights on Wednesday because I know... Um, I'm a, usually that is my workout for the day. And yeah. keep in mind, if y'all if y'all didn't know, we film like two to three workouts at a time, right? So because we don't have time throughout the week, we have other obligations. We have our own personal clients, so we have to knock out you know two to three weeks worth of content in in one day just to make sure we're consistent for you guys. So um, just kind of keep that in mind, surround it around your schedule, and it doesn't have to be super structure every single week as long as you're hitting those five days that you committed to you'll be good to go yes. all right so so recapping we've written down our goals yep. we've set goals for ourselves we figured out a realistic timeline or time frame mm -hmm. that we could work out how many days a week how long do i have from there we've created our weekly routine and that's yes. the longest most hardest topic so <laughs> now we can move on to the next point after you've written your routine. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to focus on progressive overload. What is progressive? What overload, is progressive Toya? overload? Oh, progressive overload is exactly what it says in its title. <laughs> we are progressively loading in some type of way. Some variability is progressively changing. Yes. And we say progressively because if you jump from five pounds to 60 pounds, that's not progressive. No. You've missed out from 10 to all the way up to 60, I don't even right? know how you jump so, that high. 
Um, progressively means just that. Take it one thing at a time. Take it slow. Progress slowly. So how can you progress? You can progress by increasing your weight, increasing mm -hmm. your resistance. Yeah. Let's say you're using resistance bands. You could go from a medium band to a heavy band, yeah. right? That is progressively overloading. You changed your goblet squat from a 15-pound dumbbell to a 20-pound dumbbell. Yeah. That is progressively overloading. Yeah. And Or if you're doing body weight, you added a weight vest to the mix, yes, right? Yes. Or you increased your reps. Or reps. You yeah. increased your sets, right? You are Correct. now doing four sets instead of three sets. So those are just some examples of how you can progressively overload. Yeah. And it's important for so many reasons. We'll start with this one. If I am new to working out mm -hmm. and I... Um, did a goblet squat with 10 pounds, right, mm -hmm. for 12 reps. And I was like, okay, that felt good. And then I next week try to grab a 60 pound. I might hurt myself, <laughs> right? I may not no, understand to how to properly hold that dumbbell. I may not understand that going from 15 pounds to 60 pounds, that takes a lot more core engagement. Yeah. You're going to have to tuck your pelvis. If your form is off and you don't understand that this 60 pounds is a <laughs> lot more than 15 <laughs> You, you can hurt yourself, yeah. right? So progressively overloading just kind of shows you what your body is capable of. Now, let's say I did that 15 pound and my goal was to do 10 reps and I could do 100. Yeah. Obviously, it's easy. You can progress a little bit yeah. faster, right? You might jump to a 40 pound from that because you knew 50 and I did that for 100 reps. That's nothing. So that just tells you how you can progress. Yeah. And keep in mind, like, you know, you can progressively overload throughout a workout too as mm -hmm. well. So this is the beauty of doing sets. I know a lot of you love no repeat workouts and you don't, <laughs> you only want to do it once. But to be honest with you, we talked about stimulus, right? If you're only working your legs one time, then you're not going to progress, right? So, you know, we recommend doing, and, and a lot of the workouts we've been doing recently, we're trying to do it for multiple sets in We'll disguise it sometimes in ways because we'll we'll do a similar exercise and you think it's no still repeat, squatting. but you're still working the same <laughs> muscle group, right? Surprise. But if you're doing more circuit style training, let's say you're, let's say I'm doing front squats for four sets. I do the first set and I do this personally just to get warmed up sometimes. Let's say you're doing front squats with dumbbells for four sets and you have 25 pound weights. You knock out 10 reps. You're like, oh, that's, that felt pretty good, right? You can kind of overload a little bit more let's go up to 30 pounds 10 pound uh 10 reps felt good then i'll go up to 35 you might get to that 35 uh pound those 35 pound dumbbells and you're like all right that was tough right stick at 35 right mm -hmm. stick at 35 and then now you know okay for those front squats I i'm pretty good at 35 pounds and i'm gonna stick to that this week right if i hit that a couple times this week i'm gonna stick to 35 pound dumbbells and then next week Again, maybe now you can start at 30 pounds for that first set, go up to 35, and then you're like, mate, okay, 35, that's pretty easy. I can go up to 40, right? So you can do it kind of progressively overload within your sets too as well, and that's the beauty of sets is that you can, you know, you can gauge where you are, and where I'm trying to get with this is, especially in the first couple of weeks of your program, write down where you're starting. Yes. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I see people... <laughs> they do the same weights all the time, right? Yep. And it's like they don't, and, or if, if something happens and they skip a week, they don't even know where they started. They're just picking up the same weights every single time. And if you're picking up the same weights every single time, you're going to have the same results or yep. you're going to feel the same weight every single time. So I do this personally myself where I don't make note of, you know, especially when I'm going pretty heavy, I don't make note of where I was in week one or, you know, just working out in general. And I have no clue where I'm at, right? I'm lost in my program because I don't, I didn't write it down. I didn't yep. make note of this. So the most important, I I say your your you know week one and two are the most important weeks of the you're program because you're gauging where to start. You're gauging yeah. where, to start. It gives and where you, you're gonna go. It, yeah, it gives you a starting point. And the most important thing you can do in those first two weeks is make notes of everything. And that can be what weights you started with. That can be how you felt while you were doing that workout. Let's say you did the first workout and you were like man, that was tough, right? Make note of that because then next week you can stick to that workout, try to master it, and then that, that'll that tell you how to kind of progressively overload yep. on week three and then moving on to week four. And, and there's that. nothing worse than, let's just use a back squat, for example. If you don't remember where you were, like where you left off, there's nothing worse than like doing mm -hmm. three or four sets and being like, oh, that was easy because I actually did 20 pounds heavier last time. <laughs> now you wasted a lot of your energy yeah. when you could have progressed, yeah. you know? And there's no 
getting that energy back once it's out out. (laughs) so it's important because you don't want to i wouldn't say waste a day but it's like if your goal is to progress you know now you could have progressed this day and now you probably won't hit what you could have hit because you've already used a lot of your energy doing what you've already done so that's the other important thing about having a program is it's not just there for you to read and follow along there will be changes made throughout i can write myself an eight week program and at the end of week eight it's not going to look how i wrote it at week one because i've made changes based on um just kind of things that i felt throughout like this is too easy i need Mm -hmm. to add this in here or this is too difficult i bit off more than i can chew there are going to be changes to the program um and that's where these tips come in every yeah. time you need to make a change you can start at the beginning okay yeah. do you have a new goal now did you reach a goal that you um set for yourself a lot faster than you thought and yeah. now you're changing your program around that exactly. is okay so writing down where you left off where you started and progressively overloading in your reps your sets please don't be afraid to increase your sets yes, it's okay do it. it seems boring but i promise you it's something that can help you because like he said those first few sets you might just be feeling it out where you're like wait i can do another set yeah. much heavier mm-hmm. so increase your sets your reps your volume increase resistance whether you're doing body weight using bands yeah. using dumbbells kettlebells barbells whatever you're using mm-hmm. increase that resistance um and those are just some of the ways that you can progressively yeah. and it depending on what you, before we move on to the next step but depending on what you're working what type of equipment you're using um i always like to use the five pound rule five pounds at a time and it may not seem like much but um, like, you know, if, if you're doing a six week program and you're increasing five pounds every week, that's 30 pounds of weight increase. Right. That's a, a huge lot. difference. Right? You you can say at the end of those six weeks, like, wow, I'm lifting 40 pound weights when I was when I started at 15. Right. Yeah. That's that's a big difference. So don't think just because, you know, don't think five pounds isn't a lot. It's a, it's a big difference over the course of time. So uh, yep. just keep that in mind. And one last thing on this topic, yep. too. Um, another question I know we'll get is when do you change? When yep. when do you progressively overload? There's a lot of different instances. You can progressively overload if you feel like, let's say you wrote 12 reps down. If you're doing 20 reps and your goal was 12, it's too easy. Yep. Right. Um, if you're able to, let's say you repeat a workout and it took you 20 minutes less, mm-hmm. you're moving through things a lot more faster. You don't need more rest time, especially on strength training. If your goal is to do a strength training workout and you only need 10, 15, 20 seconds of rest, yeah, it's, it's, not. it's not heavy enough, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's where you're like, oh, it's easy. I'm breezing through this. Yeah. Give yourself more of a challenge and whatever it is, increase the weight do more reps, whatever it is. We mentioned all of the different ways. So you'll feel when you're able to progress. And that, seriously, like he said, it might be adding two, two and a half pound plates to the side. Makes a difference. That five pounds makes a difference, right? Anybody who does um, like uh, like weightlifting, what's what's the like uh, power lifting? Mm -hmm. When you get into the like 400 pounds, like let's say you're doing a deadlift and you're lifting 400 pounds, Anybody who do, does like powerlifting, they'll tell you, I can feel those two and a half pound plates on the side. Yeah. Like they can feel the difference in, in, in how much that weight kind of adds on to it. So yeah. um, keep that in mind as you're going throughout your program. And also think of training as you have to continue to make your body uncomfortable, right? If you're, if you're comfortable and you're going into each and every workout and you're feeling like it was easy and it was a breeze, then your body is going to tell you the same thing. <laughs> like it's, that was too easy. And honestly, that it probably won't do anything for you in a sense of progression, right? You have to continue to trick your body, right? Your body is smart. Your body is smarter than, than you think. If you're going on a five mile run every single week and, you know, it's a breeze for you, then, right? As soon add as, some as soon sprints. As, or <laughs> add some sprints. Or if you just increase it to five and a half miles, your body will feel that, right? Yeah. Because it's it's so used to it. Your body can get acclimated to certain things. Or add some hills. That's add, the ooh, way you can add change it, right? Progressive Keep overload. The five miles, <laughs> but add some resistance. Exactly. So, so yeah. that's just a quick example of, you know, how to progressive overload. And again, it's all based on you. It may You may be able to add every single week. You may have to add every couple of weeks. It just yeah. depends on how you feel. You have to fill it out. Again, make note of it. 
write it down and you'll understand your body more as you go along the program. So cool. All right. All right. What's the next one? We, the, we've we learned how to progressive overload. What yep. are we doing next? All right. So next, now you pretty much created your program, right? Yep. You know, you, you have, you know what you're doing every single day. You know how you're going to progressively overload from week to week. Now, this is where you have to focus on the intangibles, right? You know, it looks perfect. You're excited. You're ready to get started. But things happen and you have to make sure you have methods of accountability in place. And yes. like I said, that those first couple of weeks are going to be exciting because you want to get started, but it's going to get tough. There are going to be days where you don't feel like it. There are going to be days where you're sore as heck and you can't get out of bed and your, your quads are on fire or it's raining outside and your run that you had planned, <laughs> you feel like it's ruined, right? You have to have methods of accountability in place to make sure that your program is intact at all times, right? So different ways that you can have methods of accountability is one, number one, have a have a partner. Somebody, they might not be following your specific program, which again, if you made a program for yourself, they shouldn't be following it anyway, but have a partner or someone who is just as committed as you are, who is focused on their own specific goal, who could just go to the gym with you or who yep. could just text you and say, hey, you get your workout in today, or if you have an Apple Watch, you can add them to your uh, ring, your move rings, and they'll see when you complete your workout. That's yeah. motivating. Sometimes I'll see my dad and my mom, they'll go on a long walk, and I was like, you know what? I want to go on a long walk. You know and what I mean? And it just holds you accountable, too, because yeah. having to say, no, I didn't do my workout Ooh. might be discouraging, yeah. right? So having a accountability partner, it can be someone that you live with. It could be a trainer, yeah. and you don't have to physically be training with them every day, but just to check in, like, hey, got my cardio done today, someone got to my strength to. training in, someone to report to. Um, another method of accountability can be some type of check-in. Yeah. So that check-in can come in so many different ways. It can be checking in with your accountability partner. It can be taking progress pictures every other Friday. It can be going to get your body fat done. Mm -hmm. All of those things are going to hold you accountable. And also it gives you... Um, something to look forward to. So yeah. for example, if I know every other Friday I'm taking progress pictures, I'm on point at <laughs> least on Thursday. You're thinking about because, those pictures every week. Yes, exactly. And it holds you accountable because if I go get my body fat done and I decreased in progress, right? My body fat went up when my goal is to go down. And yeah. I know that I've eaten out every single day this week and I skipped two workouts. It's showing. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm having to look at that and say, wow, like, all right, you're holding me accountable. Let me be more committed to my program or whatever it is. It's yep. showing you. Um, and it also could be, you might say, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Why isn't it budging? You, It might be time to look at your program. Yeah. Do we have to change things in the program? Do we need to change things in the nutrition? Yeah. So it's not always a bad thing. It might even help you reroute or restructure. Yeah. Um, and that's the beauty of having a program because if you're not getting towards your goal and mm -hmm. you're kind of going away from it, you might say, Hey, what am I doing? That's not benefiting me. And yeah. you can literally look at the map that it took you to get there and make changes. Yeah. So, and that's the beauty of it. It helps you make, uh, understand the adjustments that you need yeah. to make. Cause well, if you didn't have that program yeah, and then they know. say, well, yeah. what have you been doing? Yeah. Well, I just, I've been working out <laughs> like, you know, so okay. there's exactly. So that kind of helps you to say like, maybe we need to add in some more strength training or maybe we need to add in, um, some getting the heart rate up a little bit or more. Maybe whatever I need to is. recover more. Maybe I need to focus on getting more yes. sleep because that's yes. important too. That's something I struggle with, right? Like I, I notice sometimes I'm not making the progress I need to make because I'm not recovering properly. Yep. And if you're not recovering properly, your body cannot change. That is when your body changes is when you're undergoing recovery is when your body's at rest and when you're sleeping. Right. So keep that in mind. But also with that being said, give yourself some grace, too, as well. Like, yep. you know, over the course of a couple of weeks, you might, you know, you, you might, you know, go super hard. And then, you know, you check in. And you're like, man, I don't, I, how did I only lose a half a pound? Right. That's a, that's progress. Right? Yes. That's progress. Like, yes. don't. Don't beat yourself up because you, you might have these expectations of where you are, but I've seen a lot. I've, I've, we've been training for eight plus years now, and I can't tell you how many times where I, I see I have a client and, and they, they go hard, they're committed, they, they, they stay on top of their nutrition, and they step on that scale or, or whatever the case may be. However, we're measuring progress, and they're like, how? Like, I, I've done so much. How is it only a half pound or how is it only a pound? I've done so much. I've committed to it. And that can be discouraging. And a lot of times that is what, you know, 
sends people in the wrong direction. They see that and they just give up, right? They're just like, I don't, I can't do this anymore. But then what I, as a trainer, me knowing the bit, me knowing how the body works, right? It's an acclimation phase, especially if you're just getting into it. I can't tell you how many times where those first couple of weeks, they, they look at that scale, they look at their progress and it's like, it's not working. And then the next two weeks, they're like, whoa, I, I lost four pounds. Mm-hmm. Like, how did that happen? Or my jeans are like super loose now. Like, whoa, that's crazy. But that's where the different measurements of progress yes, come in because correct. the scale, we'll do a whole different episode on that, but the <laughs> scale is not always the end all be all. That and is- with that being said, a half a pound to a pound a week is sustainable and Very. that's really all you should be focusing yeah. on so that's only four pounds a month max yeah that is a lot of weight that's a lot. because if you lose four to five pounds a month at the end of the year you've lost almost 60 pounds my goodness that's a lot and i know a year sounds crazy but be real with yourself did you gain all the weight in a month no. did you lose all the muscle in yeah. a month right like What it took you to get there Mm -hmm. took some time. Give yourself some time to see the progress. And this is why we tell you guys, this is a, you know, training is a journey, right? If you, if you, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. If you're looking at it as a sprint and you're going to get discouraged at some point or or another, this is why, this is the reason why you have all of these fad diets. This is the reason why you have all of these. Lose 10 pounds quick. Yeah. This is why you have all these like medications out there to help people lose weight fast. Right. It's because people, you know, we need that instant gratification. Right. We need it to happen now. Quick. Right. I, I know I gained weight over the course of three years, but I need to lose. I need to lose it in the next two months before my birthday. Yeah. In July. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, You got to be realistic with yourself. You didn't gain it overnight and you're not going to lose it overnight realize that this is a journey um and and once you understand that you're looking at every single day as an opportunity to reach this goal and you're not looking into to reach it next week right you're you're being realistic with yourself and that's kind to yourself be kind to yourself give yourself some grace and understand this is a journey and once most people understand that concept they look at training completely different because they now understand like it's 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 a journey and you learn to improve your body in ways and you learn more about your body. Don't look at it as just like I'm trying to lose, you know, lose the weight. Look at it as like I'm learning more about myself. I'm learning more about my body. I'm learning more about my nutrition as I'm going along this journey than the time. You know, if you're trying to lose it fast, you're not even worried about it. You're just so hyper focused on the weight. You're not worried about the things that go into it and learning. And then once you get to a certain point, you're going to understand your body. And honestly, knowledge is power. You're going to be able to understand it to a point where when you finally reach that goal, you know exactly what you did to get there yes. and you'll, you never go back. And if you do somehow go back to that point, you now have the tools to understand what you need um, to lose that weight again or build that muscle again. All right. So keep that in mind, you know, have methods of accountability in place. It's going to make sure that you stay on track with your goals and uh, you know, it's, you know, it, it's going to help you out over the long run. Yeah. So. All right. Last but not least, I know this was a little longer than we prepared. So this one is quick. (laughs) This one is something probably that's going to be the most important one. Be prepared for setbacks. So this is going to happen, right? Most programs are going to be four to eight weeks because four weeks, I mean, that's even short. I would say six to eight weeks, but you want to write a program to give yourself time. As he just mentioned, you know, the time Give yourself that grace, that time to really reach the goal that it is you're trying to achieve. Um, So let's say in a six week program, that's a long time where anything can happen from you getting sick, having unexpected travel. You might injure yourself. So many things can come up and it can derail your program for a day. You might have to just rest on a day you didn't plan to rest and work on on a day you planned to rest. Or it might knock you out for a whole week. You Mm -hmm. might lose a whole week of the program and that's okay, right? So Different ways that you can prepare for them is by one, let's say you're knocked out for a week Mm -hmm. on week five of a six week program. You've made it to week five. At this point, you've probably made some strength progress, some endurance progress. You don't have to start at week one. You don't have to start over. You could start back at week five or you might say, I'm going to repeat week four because at week five, I was just starting to feel like I could get through this part of the program. Mm -hmm. Let me just go back to week four and kind of build that confidence back up. You might start at week three. Mm -hmm. You might start right back at week five, right? It 
we always get asked, like, I got sick, like, where should I start? Should I start over? You don't have to start nah. over. You don't have to feel like all your hard work is wasted, yeah. right? When the setback happens, whatever it is, control what you can control. Get back when your body's ready. Don't force it because if you start back too soon, you might re-injure yourself or yeah. you might get back into the setback. Yeah, and keep in mind, again, if, if for a lot of you that don't know, I ruptured my Achilles in November of last year and that was tough for me because you know all the things that I had built up to that point my, my goal even at that point um, was to build muscle mm -hmm. I was like I want to build a lot of muscle you know I've been focused on my endurance I've been focused on you know plyometrics increasing my explosiveness but I want to you know really try to stack on some muscle especially in the winter time is like I can't get outside and do a lot of it's building it's, time. it's building season <laughs> you know for a lot of you bodybuilders bulking out, <laughs> it's bulking season right so you know, I spent like, you know, six to eight weeks focused on building muscle. And as soon as I tore my Achilles, you know, that is what I thought about. I All that work I did to build my legs up is now. All broke. that calf work. It's ruined. <laughs> At least that was my thought process in the moment. But yeah. keep in mind, again, you know, you, you have to realize that you know, if you're going through an injury, it can be minor. It can be major you can still do something to work toward that goal. So my focus was, you know what, I could have been the type of person that's like, you know what, I'm injured, I can't work out anymore, that's it, I'll just wait till I'm back in action to start working out again. Or you can be that person that says, you know what, it's not over for me. Like I ruptured my Achilles, which means I don't have my right leg. Guess what, you can work your left leg. You can still do certain, le I, I figured out a way to work my quads and my hamstrings even though I was in a boot, right? Mm -hmm. As long as it was approved by my doctor, I said, look, doc, I worked so hard on my legs. I need to find a way to at least maintain, yeah. right? I, I put a lot of energy. I need something to do to where I can maintain. Can I do leg extensions? Can I do hamstring curls? Are these safe for me to do? Doc was like, yeah, as long as you're not putting any tension or pressure in that Achilles, I said, bet. I'm but let's say you hurt your knee and you couldn't do your quads, mm -hmm. right? This is an example of then where you can say, okay, I can't work my quads. Yep. What am I going to do about it, right? Yes. It will be discouraging in the moment, of course, right? Yeah. But now you can revert and say, I'm going to work my upper body yeah. so that when I can work my quads again, my upper body's solid, I'm yeah. good. Then I can just do maintenance on my upper body and yeah. really put the focus in my quads. So exactly. sometimes a setback will a blessing keep in disguise. you. Yeah, it'll keep you from reaching that goal you initially had. Or if your goal was to decrease your mile time, mm -hmm. that's going to be pretty hard to do with an Achilles injury. Yeah. So you can't work towards it. Great. Build another goal. Give yourself something else to work towards. Correct. Something that might even still help you towards that mile goal, but it may not be running. You can be increasing your endurance in other ways. Yeah. But you sometimes may have to scrap that goal and write mm -hmm. a new goal. Then you go back to the top of the tips. Write your goal. Yep. Get your training frequency. Boom. You might just have to change it, and that is okay. And with that being said, it was, like I said, a blessing in disguise. Because yep. now, at this point, I don't even do a lot of upper body because I've built my upper body up to a point where I, I'm, I'm good. I feel good. I'm kind of where I want, especially strength-wise. Yeah. My core is a lot stronger because I put a lot of energy into working my core and my abs. And now I have my legs back under me and I can work my legs and build them back up to what I want. So, yep. again, there's always a way that you can work toward the goal. Let's say you can't, for whatever reason, work out for four weeks. Let's say you have a major illness and, or whatever. Something can happen. You can focus on your nutrition. You can focus on your flexibility and mobility. Yep. There's always something within the, the realm of health and fitness that you can focus on that can still progressively get you toward that goal. I always yes. tell people something is better than nothing. Like, and even if that something isn't a workout, yeah. it doesn't always have to be a workout. Yeah, so, so we want you just to look at the setbacks as they, they definitely can be discouraging. Like it's, we're not like, Oh, <laughs> like get over it. Like they, nah, you might have tough. a couple days where you're sad. There's nothing more frustrating than, especially for us. I love a good leg day. And if I wake up and my knees are flared up or my, yeah. my joints are achy, I know that if I go try to lift heavy, I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah, it doesn't for, feel good. And for context, she, I don't know if you, a lot of you know, she has lupus. Which is an autoimmune disease, which yeah. means they can pop up whenever it whenever feels it like. Whenever it feels like. <laughs> she, she, I've seen her wake up some mornings like she's like a monster. She attacks that leg day like crazy. And I've yep. seen her, you know, especially the night before she's writing her program. She's writing out her workout. She's doing her stretches to make sure that she's prepared. And she wakes up and her joints are achy. 
like her her posture is bad because she's so inflamed hey, and, and flaring up. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but her posture, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, I can tell yeah. that she's not feeling it. And again, that goes back to she doesn't have to do that leg day that yep. day. She can focus on do, maybe doing some steady state cardio that day, going or on. Sometimes a walk. it's a yeah. Sometimes it's a rest day where all we do is just walk, yeah. and we're like, you know what, we'll do the leg day tomorrow. Or exactly. if I was supposed to rest on Thursday, I'll do the leg day Thursday. Mm-hmm. So. It just all goes back to preparing yourself because something is going to happen. It's inevitable, yeah. especially in a longer length of program mm-hmm. um, and just having the mindset to be able to shift. So Correct. So that's just, that. Yeah, that's that. That's the, the gist of how to create your own program. <laughs> the gist, sorry, that was long, but <laughs> it was we long. wanted to give you a good overview. It can be longer. Overview. Trust me. Yeah, there's so many. I know <laughs> that we know the questions that are going to be They're coming. We up. know. But this is a good place it's to a base, start. It's a foundation. We've got to give you guys yes. a foundation of where to start. And again, we have these tips for you lined out. So let's just do a quick overview, all right? Yes. Number one, make sure that you have a goal. Write down your goal. Be as specific as possible. Even if you feel like it's something that's out of reach, write it down. Like, example, I want to lose body fat. Yeah. Or example, I want to grow my glutes or have more defined arms. Yeah. Boom. That's your, your goal. goal. All right. Then once you got your goal, now let's figure out a realistic training frequency. I think I can, not I think, don't I be know confident. I can. I, I know, know I will. I know I can get three <laughs> workouts in a week for 30 minutes a day. I know for a fact I can do that. Now you have your training frequency. So you got your goal. You have your training frequency. Yep. Now it's time to write your routine. All right. And just use those tools that we gave you to split it up however you need to split it up to make sure you have the stimulus that you need yep. to see progressions from week to week whether it's three days four days five days i do not recommend six and seven days unless you're focusing or hyper focusing on your recovery and your nutrition every single day trust me i saw just real quick i used to work out hard and this is when i was a little younger you know maybe 23 24 i went crazy for six days a week and it got to a point where i plateaued and Something told me, I was like, all right, let me just cut off a day. Maybe I'm just, I, I'm doing too much. Maybe, and, and that's the thing. I didn't even really feel like I was tired. I just felt like, all right, maybe I'm just committing to too much. I cut it down to five days a week, and I realized it was just my recovery. Like, my body, my brain and my body were on two different pages. Like, my brain was like, go, 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 go. You got to go. And my body was like, yo, bro, <laughs> I need some time to chill out a little bit so that you can grow. You know what I mean? So, and, and I, I, and I, as soon as I cut it down to five days a week, I started to see progress. So sometimes, again, that's the beauty of a program. It just allows you to see certain things. So again, tip number three, you know, create your own routine, do something that's realistic and that you know you can stay consistent with. All right. What's next? Progressive overload, progressive overload, increase your reps, increase your sets, change your stimulus in some way progressively. Once you, when to do that, you'll feel it. It's becoming too easy. You're resting Your rest periods are a lot shorter. You don't have to rest as much in between. You will feel when it's time to make a change. Correct. Progressive overload within your program. That can change throughout the program. Um, And then make sure that you have accountability in place, whether that's a weekly check-in, taking pictures for yourself, having an accountability partner, hiring a trainer. It's your safety net. Whatever it is. Um, And then last but not least, prepare for setbacks and be able to manage them, whether that's reverting a day or changing a day whether that's starting redoing a whole week of your program Mm -hmm. whether that's writing a completely new program and putting this one away until you can get back to it however you need to handle that setback the when we get asked should i start over or how should i you know attack it we always say this is up to you 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 know your body better than anyone else you are feeling whatever is going on and you know where you're you feel confident starting back so Prepare for those step backs, step back, step back. What step is it, backs. James Harden? Um, prepare for the step back <laughs> fadeaway three, but also prepare for the set back. Yes. So that is kind of a basic rundown. overview rundown of how to create your own program. Oh yes. Yeah. So if you listen to this podcast today and you're like, you know, that all sounds great, and I learned a lot. And I'm still not quite confident in how I can create a program for myself. This is why we have, we we put certain things in place to help you out with this. So if you haven't already, check out the Juice and Toya app. And I promise you, we're not here to sell you. We're not here to, you know, take your money. We're here to help you out. That's that's what we've been here from from jump. 
I have something to say. Just to that point, I just told someone on the app, they're Mm -hmm. like, I like the follow along workouts better, da da da. Go to YouTube. Please. That we will never, we never want someone to feel like they have to be on the app or they have to do circuit style training because the one thing we always preach is what is going to keep you consistent. Correct. Some people on the app only do the follow along workouts because they're ad free there and they use the app for the nutrition, the messaging feature and all of that. Mm -hmm. Great. You know, we always at the end of the day preach whatever is more consistent or whatever keeps you consistent and and works better with your lifestyle. That's what we want you to do. Correct. But we bring up the Juicing Toy Act for the simple fact that we put a lot of energy into um, providing a lot of different resources that go into helping you out with your goals. So on the Juicing Toy app, like she said, we have nutrition. We have two uh, little segments called Two Motivate. Minute Talks for your motivation because, again, it's much more than just, just your nutrition, your recovery, and your workouts, right? There are days, again, where you're not motivated and you don't feel like it. And we have little videos in there to help you out with that or to help you process certain things that you might be going through or certain obstacles that you might be going through, right? So on the Juicing Toy app specifically, we have... I mean, it's like four, five, six different programs. Some are follow along only. Some are more focused on circuit style training. So again, if you've been doing our Juice and Toy follow along workouts for a long time and maybe you're plateauing or maybe you just want to try something different, um, you know, we have circuit style programs on, on there. And if you don't know what circuit style is, again, we're trying to dumb it down here. Circuit style is basically like what we mentioned before. You, uh, Let's say you have a squat and the lunge you know, we'll superset that. You'll do that for three sets and then you'll move on to the next exercise. It's more based on, you know. It's not no repeat. It's not. Yeah. And it's not something that you're following along to. It's yes. basically exercises that we have lift, listed out. We have video examples of how to do those exercises. And then we have even descriptions and we we'll tell you how many reps you can do. And then we also have guides that tell you, like, if this is too easy, this is a way mm-hmm. that you can make it more difficult. Whether you have bigger, you know, whether you have more weights or if you don't have more weights, we recommend reps and all that good stuff. So yeah. there's a lot. It, it, we're here to teach you, right? We're here. That's what the Juice and Toy app is all about. Yes. We want to teach you um, different ways in which um, you can learn how to go about a program and it'll help you, you know, make those progressions over time and help you understand and learn how to create and gener- uh, generate a program for yourself. So um, your first week is free. This is a re- we do this for a reason because we want you to use those seven days to, to see if it works for to you. To see if it works for you, mm-hmm. right? I won't, like we're literally giving you seven days to literally ask questions. To ask Please questions. use the messaging it's feature. It's a messaging feature where yes. you can message us. Like it's not, we don't have a team. This is it's either, one of us. <laughs> either Toya or me, where if you have any questions, we are here to help you out and answer your questions and make sure you have what you need. So we've had people come on the app and it and they started circuit style training. They haven't looked back since. Yeah. And we've had people come on the app and they're like, ah, this doesn't work to me work for me i'm going to stick to the youtube workout it's okay yeah we're we're here to support you we bring up the app programs because we just told you how to create your own program we just want you to see how the programs are written so you'll see from week one to week four or week six it is a little bit more difficult it is progressively overloaded yeah but you can also take that program and make it your own so you might look at that program and say i actually can only do three days not all five Take out that stretching day and take out one of the other days that doesn't make sense for your program. And yeah. now you've got a three day a week, right? And you can ask us if that makes sense, right? Exactly. That's so that's why for. we bring up the app is to tell you there's a ton of programs written out mm-hmm. and you can go look at them and see how they've progressively overload. Look at these tips we just gave you and yeah. look at how they change. So check it out. We'll put that link in the show notes again yeah. or in the description, wherever you're watching. But the first <laughs> week is free. free. Please try it out first and see if it works for you Correct. use the messaging feature and ask, ask questions. us questions yeah. um we're here to help so and, if, and one more thing you know if you've done i know a lot of you who are watching this have done you know we've done a lot of challenges um on youtube we've done a lot of them if you follow one of those challenges that is that is the perfect example of yes. how to generate a program granted it's more generalized for everybody to follow but again we Literally go through every single week. We say we we follow this entire uh, structure, this entire list of how to create yeah. your own program. We start with the goal, right? The summer ready challenge was all about losing body fat, right? So that was the goal. 
we wrote down the frequency. We did five days a week with some extra days if you wanted to include some recovery and all that stuff, right? We, we basically went down the list and, and created it just like yep. what we presented today. So um, we have that all on the app as well. Go check it out. Again, we'll leave the link down in whatever description <laughs> you're listening to this or if you're watching it on the YouTube channel. But um, again, we're here to help you out. That's what we're here for. That's our goal. That's our mission and all of this. And, um, you know, yeah. if, you have any, if you have any questions, we're always here for you. So I know this one was a little longer, but it's a lot it's to okay. cover. This one was definitely yeah. a most asked, like I said earlier, seriously, aside from <laughs> how many calories, which we will still do. Yeah. Um, but this one was very asked about and one that we think can be very helpful, especially as we get into months where things might be a little more busy and yeah. you might need just a little program to follow so that every day you're not saying, what am I doing today? I'm just going to skip it because I don't know what to do. Yeah. So um, um, we'll program, also try to, I'm sorry. Go oh, no, I was just gonna say a program will really help you um, when you're busy as well, because you're not having to think about yeah. it. It's already written out for you. There might be minor changes you have to make, but you already know what you have to do. That takes a lot of the stress away oh, from yeah. working out. All so. right. So, cool. um, that's pretty much all we have for you today. Again, go subscribe to the juice and Toya podcast, YouTube channel. Be sure to give this a five star rating, comment what you liked about it. Let yeah. us know what else you'd like to hear. Again, this is health and fitness. There's so many things we have to cover. Health, so many fitness, and lifestyle. lifestyle like, there's a lot. Mental health. It's a lot of things lot. that um, we want to cover and help you guys out with. So uh, we appreciate you guys. We thank you for joining us. And um, we're going to see you at the next one. See you all at the next one. Oh, yeah, well, that's my hope for the show. Yo, when that was...